Over the past couple of years, people have been joking about how CDPR is waiting for us to uncover all the secrets of The Witcher 3 before they announce the next game. Well, holy sandwich fuck. Less than 24 hours after my last video went up, they did actually announce the development of the next Witcher game. The next Witcher saga, in fact, likely a new trilogy, so let's talk about it. But before we begin, let me get a couple of things out of the way. First off, people have been coming up with all sorts of conspiracy theories that I probably work for CDPR or that they told me to make this video right before the announcement or something like that, and I wish to say that none of this is true. It's one hell of a coincidence, if it is a coincidence, but I'm just as puzzled as anyone. Next, as usual, I'd like to warn you that this video will be full of all kinds of spoilers, naturally. And finally, that a long time ago I did make a sort of predictions video for the next Witcher game, and since so far we have very little solid information about it, I might end up repeating myself a bit. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get on with it. The Witcher Medallion in the Snow. That's how they teased the announcement, and the moment I saw it, the very first reaction and association I had was Siri. She has a cat school medallion in the games, she gets it in the end of the books actually, which is several years earlier, and during the ending of The Witcher 3 she has to stop the White Frost in a place covered by snow. But before we talk about Siri's potential involvement, let us look at the medallion first. As I said, my initial thought was that it's from the school of the cat, however, it looks particularly like a lynx. So could it be that they're embracing the fictional school of the lynx, founded by the remaining members of the schools of the cat and the wolf, and Kira Metz? Or maybe by Siri herself? Honestly, I doubt all of that, because it would contradict some of the potential outcomes of The Witcher 3, although the origins might change based on the kind of save you import, assuming importing saves is a possibility, or maybe they're taking a note from Netflix's book. Gosh, I hope not, but uh, you remember in season 2 we saw all kinds of different wolf medallions? And therefore, this may simply be a variation of the cat medallion. Now, one thing I do know is that the picture they teased is suspiciously low res. You know, I would have expected a 4K wallpaper or something. Unless they've already posted that and I didn't pay attention. But if they haven't, this could be a cropped version of a larger image that shows even more hints that they haven't revealed yet. Other than the medallion, there's the snow. Um, what could snow indicate? Possibly the white frost? We might have parts of the game that take place in worlds similar to the ones we visit with Avalach, where the snow is taking over. Or it may simply indicate that there will be a prominent snowy location in the game, one of the mountain ranges, or Kovir perhaps. And once again I thought about Ciri. She has a couple of scenes in the books that revolve around snow, but she doesn't yet have the cat medallion at those points, so it's probably not that. And speaking of Siri, let's consider her potential involvement. I know many people like the idea and want the game to be about Siri. Quite some time ago, the developers were asked in an interview if they were planning to do anything more with Siri's character. And they gave a rather generic positive answer, something along the lines of Sure, we would like to explore more of Ciri in the future, there are still things that can be said and done with her character. And then the next day, a lot of people were like, oh my god, Ciri possibly confirmed as protagonist for The Witcher 4. But honestly, I don't really share their enthusiasm. I think Ciri as a potential main character is rather limited by a few things. First off, if you want to set a game about her after the events of The Witcher 3, you would have to take one of the three endings as canon. And that will diminish CDPR's work on the third game, as well as the sense of agency by the players, and I believe they won't do that. I guess they could just say that Ciri became a Witcher and go with it, but I personally would prefer if they didn't. I think the Empress ending and the worst ending are incredibly powerful and it would be a shame if they end up being disregarded. So, with that in mind, the only spot left to place a Siri-based story is between the ending of the books and the beginning of the third game. 
That's about a 5 year time span and you can actually do quite a lot with it. She can be in various locations, both in our world and other worlds. The NL could be involved, they could expand on the Nilfgaardian Empire, on Zeracania and whatnot. Um, there is potential in that, definitely. However, there are still issues in this case. The first one is that they will be limited by the fact that Ciri has both an established past and future. So there won't be a lot of freedom when it comes to having different long-term outcomes for her character. And also, from a gameplay perspective, there is the issue that she simply doesn't have that much room to develop. She has the sword fighting skills, that's true, but when it comes to monster lore, potions, bombs, oils, and so on, she can't quite compare to a proper witcher. Also, her own special powers haven't fully developed yet and are not entirely under her control. That happens in the third game. So, I mean, it's doable, but I feel like it may be difficult to sell her as a main character during that time frame from a gameplay perspective. Otherwise, I don't have any issues with Ciri. I wouldn't mind if she makes an appearance in the game, but I do have some concerns if she ends up being the main character. Now, I suppose I should mention a theory I heard from one of my viewers. Specifically, that we might end up playing as either Ciri's child or perhaps a more distant descendant of hers. He or she would have the Elder Blood power and in a similar fashion to the books, all kinds of people may be trying to manipulate or use them in various ways. We might tap into Ciri's Elven heritage, which offers a lot to draw from. We might go deeper into lore revolving around the conjunction of the spheres. And last but not least, that character might actually be a Witcher. I must say, something like that could work. It could allow us to play a Witcher with a more unique set of powers. And also, it can help avoid the potential issues caused by the different endings of The Witcher 3. While Ciri's fate could be different, based on the last game, a descendant of hers might more or less have the same story, regardless of what happens to Ciri. And I think that's all I had about her. Now, what about Geralt? Based on my comments, I know that a good number of people would like to see him in the next game either as a sort of mentor or as the main character once again. Some of you have gone to the extent to say that you wouldn't wish to play a Witcher game if it's not about Geralt. Now, I fully agree that Geralt is awesome, but I doubt he'll have a major role in the next game. First of all, they call it a new saga, which I would say implies a new main character. And also, as much as I like him, I think he had a proper send-off in Blood and Wine and I'm willing to put his character to rest. Every good thing has to have an end, and I think he found his. Bringing him back might actually ruin his character, and I would hate to see this happen. There have also been speculations about playing characters other than Geralt, usually witchers from the third game, the most popular of which has got to be Vesemir, specifically the young version of him, and a couple of years ago I thought that wasn't too unlikely, However, after Nightmare of the Wolf on Netflix, I doubt there's any more room for CDPR to work on that front. And even though CDPR and Netflix are two distinct entities, technically they both can tell different stories about Vesemir, I doubt they'll do it. So what we are most likely left with is an entirely new character. Whether it's going to be one who's already established, with a name and decent sized backstory, or one that's essentially a blank slate, I cannot say, but I absolutely think both approaches can work if done properly. Two of my favorite games of all time are The Witcher 3 and Dragon Age Origins, both of which are pretty much on the opposite ends of the spectrum, so it's really up to CDPR to decide what works best for them. I think it's fairly safe to assume that the main character will be a Witcher, but I won't mind if it's one who has just finished their training, possibly not just from a different school, but from a completely different place in the world. The setting is actually not at all limited. There are places inspired by Egypt, Zanzibar, the Middle East, and all corners of Europe, so they can unleash their imagination and just go crazy. 
And now that I mentioned Dragon Age Origins, they can even have different origins based on the different Witcher schools. Similar in a way to the life paths in Cyberpunk, except better. In my predictions video from a while ago, I actually talked about the possibility of playing two characters during the campaign. Similar to how we switched between Geralt and Ciri sometimes, we could play a Witcher and a Sorcerer this time around. I think that would be a nice mix since we haven't yet had the chance to play as a mage in the trilogy. And not just in gameplay, but story-wise, it would be interesting to have some quests available as a mage. There is once again a lot to draw on that front. The books spent a decent amount of time showing us how they are, what they think, what they want, what they do. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. There's plenty they can do if they decide to take that path. I'd like to hear your thoughts too. What do you think about in terms of potential gameplay changes and also about the idea of an entirely new main character who's not Geralt or Ciri or anyone related to them in any significant way? Speaking of that, despite its lack of popularity, I thought the story and characters in Thronebreaker, The Witcher Tales, were rather amazing. They fully lived up to the spirit of the third game, even though Geralt was not in it. Well, he was for a moment, but you know what I mean. Or for you, Geth. <laughs> so I do believe it's possible to have a proper Witcher story without Geralt. The books, of course, are also much bigger than him, especially after the first couple of ones. So yeah, I think I'm ready to try another story-driven RPG in the same world with a different character. What worries me personally is not so much the departure from Geralt's story, but the fact that the new game may simply not live up to its predecessor. The Witcher 3 is not a perfect game, but it strikes what in my opinion is an unmatched balance between a lot of great things. The game is huge, the main story is long, there are a million side quests, details, secrets, outcomes, Gwent, um, the characters are charming, memorable, distinct, well voice acted, well animated, incredibly well written. Um, in fact, it's almost unbelievable how well written the game is in English, considering that's not the original language. And this is true not just for the main cast of characters and the main quests, it goes all the way down to the smallest interactions with village peasants and so on and so forth. So in short, there is so much in the game and so much of it is so good. And it won't be an easy task to live up to that. Thronebreaker, in my opinion, succeeded. However, it is mostly an interactive story game with Gwent. It lacks so much of the sheer size and scope of The Witcher 3. Now, Cyberpunk 2077 does match the size, maybe not in terms of the main story, but otherwise it's a huge game with tons of quests and dialogue as my uh, throat begins to disturb me a bit. But uh, yeah, Cyberpunk, it's better than many people give it credit for. It has some great moments, but in my opinion, it doesn't quite hit the sweet spot as well as The Witcher 3 does. I've recently watched a few bits from streams by Pavel Sasko, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, and he does make it seem quite exciting. Um, I should probably revisit it soon, especially if a story-driven DLC or an expansion comes out. But overall, based on what I've seen from Cyberpunk so far, which is based on about 350 hours within the first few months of the game, if I have to use that as an indication of how well the next Witcher game will turn out to be, I am concerned. Okay, next up, let's talk about the small piece of news that we actually have, that was revealed about The Witcher 4, and that is the partnership with Epic Games and the departure from their original Red Engine in favor of Unreal Engine 5. I know that a lot of people were upset when they heard about this partnership, Sadly, however, I know next to nothing about Epic Games, so I'm not really qualified to talk about it. I've never used their store, I've never played their games, so you probably have a more relevant opinion on the matter. All I know is that the Witcher game will not be exclusively sold there and will be available on other platforms, based on what they've said. As for the engine, I've seen some rather impressive footage from Unreal 5, so I have no issues with it. I will say that I do love how The Witcher 3 looks. It's not photorealistic, but for some reason it works incredibly well for me. 
I know many people are using mods for improved lighting, better textures and whatnot, but I personally just play it in 4K, maxed settings with hair works, and I don't need any more. I might be a minority here, but if The Witcher 4 looks the same way, I'd be perfectly fine with that. So when I heard about the transition, I did initially get a feeling of, if it's not broken, why fix it? But if we consider Cyberpunk again, which was made on a newer version of the Red Engine, and the fact that the game was absolutely packed with bugs and all kinds of broken stuff on launch, then perhaps it's a good idea to move on to something else, if that means avoiding all those nightmares. Not just for the players, but mostly for the developers, so they can focus on making a great game, rather than making a game work. Now, based on CDPR's brief statement, it does seem like the transition to Unreal, as well as this partnership, is a long-term change, so I do hope it ends up being a positive one in the future. And speaking of the future, let us ask the truly big question. When do we finally get our hands on Tomira? I mean, when do we finally get our hands on the game? Well, The Witcher 3 took four years to make, if I'm not mistaken. It's hard to say how much groundwork they have ahead of them, but it does seem like development has properly begun, so I would say holiday 2025, which is probably too optimistic. But I honestly want to be, I want to look forward to this with the best possible mindset, however I will likely end up worrying a lot as well. What I can promise you though is that despite loving The Witcher 3 so much, I will try my best to stay honest and unbiased when making any videos about the upcoming game. One thing I did not like very much was how all over the internet people were praising Cyberpunk before it was even out. And perhaps even I was a little more excited than I should have been. I often hear myself talking about it when revisiting some of my old videos, and um, I don't wish to repeat the same mistakes again. So with that said, I wish the developers luck. I'm sure I can safely say on behalf of the Witcher community that we are all eager to learn more, and we can't wait for the day that we once more get to experience a Witcher game for the first time. I think that was it. So please tell me what you thought of everything I talked about, and I thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my supporters and YouTube members, and until the next video, stay tuned and be good.